Hello, my recipe for success friends. Uh, just in here in the kitchen today and getting ready for uh, the Christmas day and getting ready to get all the candy put together for uh, the Bailey celebration. So tonight what I'm going to be doing is I am going to make divinity. Today is a great day to make divinity or to make any kind of a peanut butter roll because We've had a really beautiful day today. It was in the low 50s here, and we've had a very dry day. So today is a great day to make divinities or peanut butter roll. So let me tell you what you'll need tonight for tonight's recipe. You will need two cups of granulated sugar, a half a cup of corn syrup, a half a cup of water, and a dash of salt. And I've already placed all of those uh, ingredients in my saucepan here and have them on a medium heat. Also you'll need two egg whites and I've got those placed over here in my mixer and I will whip those up to to firm peaks and uh, also this is an optional ingredient is pecans um, and I'll be using those in regards to topping the divinity but you do not have to use pecans if you do not want to use them. So that's the simple ingredients for divinity. It's about three ingredients. All you need is corn syrup, uh, sugar, water, a dash of salt, and two egg whites. So let me go ahead and turn my stove up here a little bit higher and get this um, syrup mixed in. And what I'll do, I have this on, is I have this on medium heat, and this will come to a, uh, bowl and this is a two-step two cooking process this is almost a, like a no-fail divinity so it's a two-step process we're going to bring this mixture up to 240 degrees which is a medium softball stage if you don't have a candy thermometer to be able to do that reading um, also um, we will, after this mixture gets to 240 degrees, we will go and remove half of the, third of the mixture and place it within our egg whites that are beat to, uh, to firm peaks. So let me go ahead and uh, get my egg whites here started. And let me talk to you a little bit more about this process as it, as it gets from the medium ball stage to the uh, firm ball stage. So, like I said, you're going to bring this mixture up to 235 degrees, and then once it reaches 235 degrees, we're going to take the mixture and add a third of it to our egg whites that we have beat into a firm peak. Then we're going to place the mixture back on the stove top and bring the mixture up to 265 degrees. When the mixture gets to 265 degrees, then we'll slowly add the rest of the mixture into our egg white mixture. So, like I said, today is a great day to make divinity because um, of the weather. Now, um, you can make the divinity if there is some moisture in the air, it's just that I find that once, uh, if the weather outside is dry and there's no moisture in the air, the divinity sets up a little faster. So let me go ahead and turn my mixture up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my, put, place my candy thermometer into my saucepan. If you don't have a candy thermometer, what we'll do is we will use a the cold water cup test where you will just add the mixture into cold water until it forms that medium ball stage. I also have over here, let me show you what I have laid out. I have my parchment paper laid out to be able to uh, 
place my divinity on after it sets up. You don't have to grease that or butter that, I should say. You, should, you do not have to butter it. It's the parchment paper will be fine and the, and the candy will release from the paper easily. Let me go check on my egg whites here. that the KitchenAid mixers, let me just go over here and show you what I've got. I find that the KitchenAid mixers are great for mixing, but the bowl is really deep. So when you're beating eggs in that mixture, I mean in that bowl, sometimes you'll have to raise your bowl up in order for the, uh, the beater actually to make contact with the eggs. Egg whites. Turn this around here and let you see what's going on. Right now we are at 210 degrees. Remember, we're going to get this up to 240. And once it hits 240, then we're going to add a third of the mixture. So what I have here is I have a long ladle that is good for dipping. And that way I will not burn myself when I'm placing the hot syrup into the egg whites slowly. We're up at 220 right now. Turn my egg beater up a little. Let me show you what this meringue looks like or these egg whites. Egg whites is actually called a meringue once it's beaten and whipped into the air is whipped into it. Let me just show you what this would look like, what kind of consistency you would need. See how that is, uh, those egg whites have got to a firm peak and they're actually clinging to the uh, whip. So we're at around 2.30 right now. Let me turn on the exhaust here so that the some of the more from the vapors can get out of the kitchen. Now I recommend that you make sure that you keep this on a medium high heat. Don't try to rush this process because if you do, it's going to be inconsistent uh, and you're going to get your sugar up at a higher peak, I mean a higher temperature than you want it to and it'll rise too quickly and it will crystallize. I just stirred that there in order to stabilize the temperature to make it consistent throughout. And if you've got a candy thermometer, the candy thermometer will tell you what stage. I like this thermometer because it has the actual markings on it of when it gets to the different stages, softball, medium, uh, hardball, and crack stages and then the caramel stage. Like I said, we're going to bring this up to 240 degrees. Let me kind of bring you over here, get a small glass, and I'm gonna show you tonight how to do this without a candy thermometer. Now this is the water test method. What you're going to do is you're just going to take some water, I mean in a small glass, cold water, and you're going to take some of your syrup and you're just going to add it into your water. And as you can see, that just flattened out completely. It didn't form a ball at all. So this is not ready yet. If 
you put your finger down in it, see how it just comes off my finger? That is not to a medium ball stage yet. I'll just keep it there and we'll work at it a little longer. It looks like it were at 230. Now the candy thermometer is going to be your foolproof method. Um, but you do not have to have a candy thermometer to make candy. You can use the old cold water glass test. That's the way they used to do it for years without the candy thermometer, but the candy thermometer does give you consistency in making sure that it's foolproof. Go ahead and stir this. Before I came home to make this video, uh, my wife and son uh, went out and looked at the Christmas lights around our town and looked at all of the pretty decorations that people had out for the holidays. It's always nice to be able to get out and, and look at the lights and enjoy them at this time of year. So if you've not done that, I would recommend going out and um, taking an evening and just driving around in your car. That's something you do, can do while you're we're all quarantined and go to your local restaurant. We went through and got some hot chocolate after we were finished looking, driving around and looking at the lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this method again. So I'm gonna take some of the liquid, the syrup liquid, and I wanna place it into the glass. And I'm gonna just move it around And as you can see, it's getting, bring it over here closer to you. See that? It's almost like a firm, little medium firm ball. So it, as you can see in my glass, bring it over here so you can see it. That's the consistency that you should get. And our candy thermometer says 240 degrees. So the cold water glass test and the uh, candy thermometer are reading the same. So what I'm gonna do is, now this is gonna be an eye, you're gonna have to just eyeball this. Let me bring you down here to let you see this. This mixture is about right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it over here and remember I'm gonna use my ladle. Let's go over here and see what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna add a third of this liquid into, and I'm slowly going to drizzle that in. Don't pour it all at once because what will happen is you will cook your eggs. So I'm slowly drizzling that in. These mixers are really handy, but if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, you can do this uh, with just a regular kitchen mixer, handheld mixer. See how I'm just slowly drizzling that in? And we'll do one more scoop. And you're just gonna have to eyeball this in regards to a third. My kitchen has this light over the island here, and it's not great for videoing because it's right in the way, it seems like. Or I should have set up in another part of the kitchen. Slowly drizzle that in. I'm gonna take just a little bit more of that mixture and put it in. 
this is res this is a same process that you do for your peanut butter roll, but you bring the mixture up to 250 degrees instead of 240, and you slowly add the mixture in as well. Now remember, divinity is a two-step process, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this back to the stove, let this beat, and I'm going to let this come up to 265 degrees. So I'm going to let this mixture come up to 265 degrees. So you will need to watch this really close and watch your, uh, your divinity whip if that's in your bowl right now. That's whipping. And remember, we're going to bring this up to 265 degrees. Turn it around here so that you can see what's going on. The steam that's coming up. Don't want to turn everything on high so that you can be able to hear some of the audio. But the 265 degrees is approximately close between the uh, medium ball stage and the firm ball stage. And this over here is whipping up. It's almost like a uh, marshmallow. And if, go ahead and pour this out so that you'll know how to do that test if you do not have a thermometer. Turn that down a little. Now remember I said at the beginning of this video that this is a two-step cook process. The first step cook process was get the syrup up to 240 degrees, place a third of it into your egg whites that are beat at firm peaks, and then we're going to cook the remaining of the syrup to 265, which is a firm ball stage, not a medium, but a firm ball stage. 265 and it looks like we are at 265 you check it to make sure yep we are at 265 so I'm going to turn it off the heat I'm going to remove my thermometer and remove it from the heat Put your thermometer immediately over in hot water because this stuff really sets up quickly. So let me bring you over here to the mixer so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm slowly going to add this mixture in. I find that this long handle uh, ladle is great for getting into this saucepan and dipping this out. Now this mixture is actually boiling in this ladle, so it is really hot. Now I'm going to turn this up just a little bit more. Now with this process, this is different from your peanut butter roll. With this uh, divinity, the divinity gets almost like a marshmallow uh, consistency really fast. And as you can see, there's a thread that has spun. Candy making, especially divinity, it's all about getting this this uh, syrup at the right temperature. If you get everything to the right temperature, you're going to have a success in regards to your candy and how it turns out. But another key rule to candy making is patience. 
I do not like this slot here. I am going to have to find a different place to do these videos. Maybe I need to move to the other end, but there's another one just like it on the other end. Really handy when you're down there looking at your food when you're cooking it. And I'm getting ready to take basically the last amount of the syrup out of this bowl, out of this saucepan. Like I was saying earlier, today is a great day for candy making. I always keep a, my sink behind here full of water so that I can instantly take that saucepan, that syrup, over to that water and let it start to uh, soaking so it will not stick. Move this out of our way. Bring the, a little bit closer here so that you can see what's going on. Down here so you can see the mixer. Make sure you get a good angle here so you can see much stuff on the countertop. I had a Christmas party at work and my secret Santa got me a nutcracker. I collect nutcrackers so that's a really sweet gift. Really pretty on the counter. So as you can see over here in our mixing bowl it's just a waiting game right now. What we're going to have to do is just let this start to mix until it uses, loses its sheen. And I'm going to actually turn it up a little faster on a higher speed so that it will bit, whip a little faster. And while it's sitting here whipping and you're getting to see it whip, as you can, I touched the bottom of this bowl, it is really hot. So let me show you how to cool this down. And what you're wanting this to do is to lose all of its sheen or shine. One method that I use to cool this down really quick is just take a cold towel and just rub your bowl, if you have a metal bowl. Or you could put this in an ice bath if you have it in a, I probably wouldn't do this in a glass bowl. I never like to do anything that's whipped in a glass bowl because my mom always say that the, the whip may chip that glass. So. I always try to do all of my whipping, just any kind of candy that I make that needs whipped in a metal bowl. As you can see, that sugar has, has hardened on that bowl. I'm going to stop it and bring it up here and let you see what it looks like so far. I'm just going to take this and this is not at a consistency that you want yet. Still, as you can see, it still has a lot of shine to it and it is not firm enough to stay on your whip. I mean on your spatula or your spoon. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put that in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir it. And one of the things that you can do if you're doing this with a little hand mixer to kind of put some of the, take some of the work off that hand mixer is to use some good old fashioned 
arm elbow strength and just mix that up. By pulling that out and mixing it with a spatula, it lowers the temperature of this. And this is what you're wanting to do. You're wanting to get this to the consistency of the consistency so that it will be able to uh, cling to that spoon or that spatula. And you want it to be lowered to the right temperature so that that will happen. So I'm gonna turn it up a little higher, back on high. And the volume of this, remember, there was quite a, uh, this bowl was all the way up to here in regards to actual uh, ingredients. But as this whips, the volume of this is going to deflate and condense and you're gonna be have about half of what you originally started with in your bowl. Now, at this time, I'm gonna lay my spatula here. I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to add some vanilla flavoring to this. Now, that is another optional ingredient. Now, uh, some people do not like to add vanilla flavoring. Some people do. Uh, you can also add almond extract if you'd like almond flavoring but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the clear vanilla and I'm going to it's you could put a teaspoon in but I'm going to do the old-fashioned method and I'm just going to add it by what I know so a splash of this and a splash of that but if you want to measure it you can but it would be a teaspoonful and let me say this, um, I always use the clear vanilla because it enables your divinities or your peanut butter rolls not to be tinted. Now, you can tint this and you can make it in batches. You could add some red uh, food gel to this or food coloring. I always use the gel because it gives you a more brighter vibrant color. You could do red and green. Now, if you have this in the summer months and you want additional flavors and you don't want vanilla, you can actually take uh, jello, strawberry, cherry, or blueberry, and you can use that uh, jello and dye this product to match whatever holiday that's going on. If you want to do a red, white, and blue, or if you want to do Christmas, green and red and, and white. But I'm just going to do the traditional white tonight. But this would be the time that you would add that jello or if you wanted a flavoring to it and not the vanilla flavoring. Or if you wanted to add uh, a flavor other than vanilla like your, um, for your jello, strawberry or cherry. Excuse me. So let me show you what this looks like now. As you can see, it's changed its consistency a lot here. It is actually able to cling to this spoon and it is actually losing a lot of its shine and sheen. But if you look in the bottom of this bowl, which I'm looking at it, you can actually see some shine. So, as you can tell, it's cleaning, but I'm gonna beat it for just a little bit longer. And what you will actually see inside this bowl is you will see almost like ribbons being formed or waves being formed. And when you're seeing that, you're almost there. Also, if you take your finger, like I just did, and you it's sticky right now. That is almost there. Let me go over here and take this off my finger.
wash my hands. So let's see what it looks like now. As you can see, it's clinging. Go ahead and stir it down in here. See what it does here for me. Try to let you see as close as you possibly can with this. I know videos, but as you can see how that just clung to that whip. Let me take it off here. See that? That's what you want. So let's just go ahead and let me show you what I usually do with this to get this off this whip. I am going to take this whip and put it back on here. And if you've got one of these mixers, slowly lower it and turn on your whip and let that machine But you don't want to do it like that. You got to be careful. And let that whip that off there for you. Put that whip over in the water. Because when this stuff sets up, it sets up quick. Let me show you what's in the bowl. And that's what you should have right now. So let me go over here and bring you over here to the other side and show you what's going to happen with this next. Get you a little closer here. I guess I need a cameraman, don't I? I want to be able to let you see what's going on with this. So, what you do here with this is you just take two teaspoons and you just take it and you just lay it out. Now, and there's your little ball of divinity. Scrape this off. Now, this is really a, sets up really fast. Put this over here in the water. Now let me show you another method. If you've got one of these little miniature cookie dough scoops, scoop it out, and then you just take a walnut, I mean, not a walnut, a pecan and place it on top. Now you'll have to let this do a couple little presses to your handle for it to be released. But I find that this makes some really uniform, but if you don't, you can use the spoon method it works perfectly fine, but I like this method because it makes all of my candies all consistent with one shape. Now I'll make some of these with pecans on top, and some of them I will just leave plain because some people don't like pecans or they have a nut allergen. And you'll know that this is, this is set up correctly because in your bowl here, let me bring it closer. As you can see, that shine is gone off the top of it. It's dull.
Now you store this, let this set out. Do not store it in an airtight container. I find that this does better if you let it get a little air. And always make sure you put one whole pecan on top. Find the pretty ones. This one may be already too set up to, no, it's, it'll go. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish scooping these out. And I'll come back on here and show you a picture later on of the actual finished product. So I hope you try this recipe. A lot of people feel that divinities are intimidating to make, but they're not. It's just that follow the recipe, make sure that you are getting the right temperature of your syrup and your recipe will turn out to be a success. And remember that for all recipes, you are the first ingredient to any recipe's success. You all have a great rest of the evening, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.